Hello again, <clears throat> Joseph Carabas here, reading from various pieces of literature which have inspired me, which have taught me something about the craft of writing, which have enthralled, intrigued, engaged me. And I'm sharing this with you to let you know what it was about them that I thought was so spectacular, hopefully to encourage you to read the same works. We're going to go uh, out of fiction, and we're going to go into Brian Fagan's The First North Americans. Uh, Brian Fagan is an archaeologist, anthropologist. Uh, love his writing. I've read many, many of his books. I will be doing a little Ice Age soon. Uh, <clears throat> just a, a truly gifted, tremendous author, not only uh, a tremendous scholar, but his ability to bring you into the time periods and the people that he's writing about just staggers the heck out of me. And I often dog ear, dog ear, his books. Yeah, see that? <clears throat> so that I can reference the way he did things and use it because, you know, good authors borrow, great authors steal, and I want to be a great author. <clears throat> so this is from the, uh, the first North Americans, and we're going to start with the earliest Americans. <clears throat> Between Siberia and Alaska, summer, 15,000 years ago. Imagine flying an ultralight over a seemingly endless Arctic plain. A fierce wind buffets your fragile craft. Gray, brown, great glacial dust cascades in the breeze, obscuring the far horizon. Strong gusts scurry through the low scrub that hungs the featureless landscape for mile after mile. Then a stretch of meandering green comes into view, a narrow river set in a shallow valley. Some low, windswept Arctic willows cling to life along the riverbanks. Small patches of ice linger at the water's edge. It is then that you see a now rare sight, great beasts browsing on the stunted vegetation, long-haired mammoths oblivious to the cold, their ears flapping at the unfamiliar engine noise. Two musk ox drink in the shallows, Arctic foxes skulk along the trees, and then at the valley's edge, you spot them. Perhaps a dozen fur-clad men, women, and children walking carefully down a gully. They carry spears and skin bags, tiny figures, alone and dwarfed by the immense, harsh landscape. These few people and others like them in small family bands are the first Americans. <clears throat> uh, I, this is just amazing crafting here because <clears throat> he sets in the very first sentence, between Siberia and Alaska, summer, 15,000 years ago. Probably you're like me. You're in this type of world and climate. So if you think Siberia and Alaska, it's got to be cold. Okay. But he says summer. Okay, so it's cool summer. 15,000 years ago. I've given you stuff you know about. Here Fagan, when I say I, Fagan has given you stuff you know about. Siberia and Alaska, and summer, okay? So you're there, okay, you know, you can understand those things, but now he's going to shove you back 15,000 years. So he anchors you <coughs> and then drives you back. Imagine flying in an ultralight over a seemingly endless Arctic plain. You may never have been in an ultralight, but you've probably read about them, probably seen them in a movie. You may have seen one flying overhead at some point. So you understand them. You have a concept. You get the idea. And you can imagine flying in one. Okay. Probably easier than Siberia, Alaska, summer 15,000 years ago. So he's anchored you and driven you. He's anchoring you again. A fierce wind buffets your fragile craft. Fierce wind, fragile craft. I get it, it's obviously a theme with me when people are able to juxtapose things like that because that's incredible. A fierce wind buffets your fragile craft. So you're already, you already know it's kind of shaky. All right? And uh, gray brown glacial dust cascades in the breeze, obscuring the far horizon. Tremendous visual. Tremendous visual. Okay. Strong gusts scurry through the low scrub that hugs the featureless landscape for mile after mile. He's giving you an image of desolation. What kind of desolation? 
Arctic plain, glacial dust, far horizon, low scrub, featureless landscape, mile after mile. Then, then, a stretch of Mandarin green comes into view, a narrow river valley set in the, a never narrow river set in the shallow valley. So way over there, my God, there's some relief. There's some, way over there though. We haven't gotten there yet. Some low windswept Arctic willows cling to life along the riverbanks. Okay, we're getting closer. And again, he's, he's giving you that claustrophobic thing, clinging some, oh, low windswept. Uh, small patches of ice linger at the water's edge. It's cold still. It is then that you see a now rare sight, great beasts browsing on the stunted, stunted vegetation. There's always this, this concept of, of loss, of um, scarcity being driven at you here. Long-haired mammoths oblivious to the cold. It's still cold. We're hammering that at you. Their ears flapping at the unfamiliar engine noise. Isn't that beautiful, the way he throws that unfamiliar engine noise? He's showing you all this, and he's bringing you back so that you know who you are. While all this, you're in that ultralight that's being buffeted by the winds, okay? Two muskox drink in the shallows. Arctic foxes skulk among the trees. Incredible visuals. He's painting this scene for you. And then, then, okay, so get him closer, get him closer. At the valley's edge. Not right here, not near us, but over there. We're still going for it. Um, you spot them. You spot them. I've already shown you mammoths, muskox, fox, willows. But now I'm going to show you what we're really here to see, them. Perhaps a dozen fur-clad men, women, and children walking carefully down a gully. Carefully. Okay, so we're still doing that. Mm, what's going on? They carry spears and skin bags, tiny figures, tiny figures. But we've shown you these huge behemoths, right? But now we're going to, great beasts, but now we're going to go back to tiny figures. Alone and dwarfed by the immense harsh landscape. Incredible visual, incredible sensory information. These few people and others like them in small family bands are the first Americans. Uh, the book is just packed with all sorts of stuff that is that quality and greater quality of writing. I really recommend it. If you're an anthropology, archaeology person, excellent reading. If you're a writer, author who wants to learn how to craft uh, visual landscapes. Mm, read this guy, Brian Fagan. Um, and there you go. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.